I was in I was in America recently. I went to the Labor Day weekend and I was by a show and my song playing, I did the crowd and like some Chinese was right there and they was like, you know, I love this song. I can't wait to give me this artist. And I was like right there. I never really know when I even reached the big circle come on up, to be honest. I being honest with you, the poor soul who made, I believe, who Bill complimented me is Marshall Mantano. Before Marshall changed over to everyone he sung, he sang in bloody hell crazy. And then I go backstage and then he was like, yo, this song here is a masterpiece. You is my pick for so come on up. Make me proud. The um the next person who I happy some homage to as well is um is fireman. <laughs> You listen to the Fresh Prince song, you listen to Vinci Internet Radio. We have with us today, Magic, Magical, yeah. So good afternoon, Magical, good afternoon to our host. Well, good afternoon, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Thanks to all the listeners who are currently tuning. Thanks for tuning to this interview. Really appreciate the love and support. Yes, before we get going, I just want you to introduce yourself to our listeners. And then after you finish your introduction, your host this evening, Mr. Moulton Sears, will be taking over. Okay, well, good afternoon again. Hope everyone out there is staying safe throughout this whole pandemic thing. My name is Darren Magical Rose. I'm from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I'm the 2019 Soka Monarch champion in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Also won four, three rural Soka Monarchs, sorry, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines as well in 2019 with my hit single called Bloody Hell Crazy. So that's basically it about me now. A brief bio. All right. Just want to say good afternoon to Radio Land. Good afternoon to our Facebook audience. And good afternoon to the magician, magical. Good, after, good afternoon to you as well, sir. Brother, brother, should I call it the, the magician or the, the soca key? No, you call me anything you want, call me anything. <laughs> once it's once it soca related, I'm fine. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure to have you here on the program, you know. you know. Yeah, speaking. and it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks for having me here. I really yeah, well, appreciate it. Yeah, well, we appreciate you coming in, you know, to, to showcase not only you know, what you're all about to the world, but also to, um, you know, highlight and, you know, big up St. Vincent and the Grenadines at the same time. Let the world yes, know that there's a little, a little island in the Caribbean Sea with, you know, lots and lots of super talents, you know, so, yes. you know, bless, man. Um, so to begin, I just want you to take us back to where, you know, the, the soca bug came into you that, you know, you start, you know, deciding well you want to be a singer and stuff like that you can well, you can take us way back here we have lots of time and and we don't yeah. limit you you know all right well apparently um my music when i discover i had a music talent is was in grade five and in the caribbean we go by grades right so it was in um grade five i used to attend the kitters government school class i'm living in camden park this is where I born and grew so Going to um to the Kitters Government School, it have this guy who lives by the road who who normally play music every morning at going to school. He all the time have his speakers outside playing music. And I go come and I go sing along and we build a good relationship. Like from just I go in school and singing along. And then um I have I have three sisters, but my middle sister normally does watch Jamaica. Passa Passa and stuff like that back in the days. And I used to watch it and watch Sting and all these things and all these artists get along. And the music just developed in me. And I realized I, I normally just made up freestyle and stuff like that on spot. So it just gave me that grind and the push to start to do music. And I went to the St. Martin Secondary School, which is a school in St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. And in Farm One, I record my first song called Mad and Crazy. To be honest, I can't even remember the lyrics to the fullest. <laughs> God, there was a hard drive and the whole hard drive would crash. And then from that, it's just 2011, I record a song Mad and Crazy. And from that, I keep on trying, keep on trying. But I never got the break and the success till 2019. Mm -hmm. so, so, so if I get it right, 
you always like a madman where you're singing just about VA madness from 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 long time. No, well, well, basically, I see myself, I see myself as as a writer, as a writer, as a writer, I see myself as a writer. So I just say I like madness. Me is a wild man, me is a man now, man, like one of the party and think a power soaker playing. I just push down people and think, but I have a big passion through raga soca. Some people will say groovy. What you call it in when you listen from me, don't say me say say raga soca, but I have a big passion for raga soca and the in between mid temple as well. I just love soca and a whole in general. Because mm-hmm. because when I listen to some of your songs, you you're like you know a lot versatile. You you can do up the the power soca. And you can do up the raga soca as well, you know, in Sinvin, so we call it raga soca. Most, most people, most people see me as a power artist, as a more power soca artist. Due to the fact that there's a song which gives me the big breakthrough and the scene and stuff like that is a power soca. And they normally see like how I just deal with the power soca. But I'm going to focus this coming year for 2022 is more about focusing on more groovy and more light music and stuff like that. A raga soca, anyhow you want to call it, but that is my 2022 mission. Mm. For, for, for the purpose of St. Vincent, man, we say raga soca. Yeah, think, yeah, we say raga soca. But in yeah. all over, some say groovy, some, yeah, say, yeah, but raga soca. We, we call yeah. it St. Vincent's raga soca. Yeah, like, yeah, like, I prefer to say raga soca because groovy is some more trini you know, when you say raga, yeah. I, I mean, you know, so, so we could, we could um, dub it down in Vinci, you know. So, yeah, so you say you started get the vibe since in primary school and the, have you been like one of those church singers as well? Did you did you practice any of the craft from church? No, well, basically, I used to go to church. Uh, my mother is a big lady in church and stuff like that, right? And I normally used to go to church. And when the, the, the song service start, I used to be like singing along, getting along. And I all the time wanted, I never wanted to sing in church. I wanted to play the keyboard. That was that was my main task going to church. I was to play the keyboard, but I never had the chance or get the chance fully to play the keyboard because the keyboardist who went to the church was really good. So, yeah. Mm. So what instrument do you play now? No, well, um, growing up, you know, I normally play pan in Simvin. So I think like mm. every kid come to the pan system. I used to play pan with um, symphonics. Mm-hmm. Right. And playing, playing pan, you know, in the pan, the pan room, you have a drum. And I used to be like the backup drummer. So mm-hmm. like if the drum I reach later, I go carry on the session with the drum. So I had a little in the drum and a little in the partner. I could do a little partner and a little drum. Mm-hmm. So and in so in primary school, you never competed in the primary school singing competition. No, I you know, this might sound funny, but you know, I never knew it used to have like a junior competition and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. I never knew it used to have. Like, because I tell you, my parents are church people, right? And mm. I was more like a home boss and stuff like that. But I used to go events, but more, the, more of the bigger events. When I was in Farm Tree, is the first time, like, someone did say, like, how come you never enter the junior so come on and stuff like that? I said, they don't have, they don't have. I asked them, like, they have it? And they say, yeah. So I tried to enter, but they know. Going to St. Martin, we was a Christian school. You know, St. Martin is all about the mm-hmm. Catholic school. So they never used to take part in stuff like these things. It's recently they just started to take part in stuff like this. So that was the downfall for me. When I realized it does happen due to the school I attended, I could not have taken part, which is was something I really like to take part in. Oh, okay, okay. That's good to know. I, I didn't even know that in my days either because... Um, I mean, I knew there was a competition, but I didn't know that St. Martin's never really used to push those things. But looking back at it now, St. Martin's, the grammar school was always a big part, but St. Martin's never had a, a good, um, a strong music program as I, as I, in my days, as I know. Um, so fast forward, you finish school and, yeah. you know, you, you decide to get, you know, into the soca thing now. How did it all start? Who who no, did well, you know? basically you know, going to school, I was doing the music. As I tell, I was I never stopped doing the music. I finished high school in 2015. You know, we do the two years in college. I went to um the technical division in the community college. And during going college, during my whole time, I had my studio home doing my music stuff and stuff like this. 
making rhythm, trying to mix my stuff, but I never understand the music to an extent. I understand the music, I love the music, but I never understand like how the music supposed to be done properly because normally I used to just make rhythm, save it as an mp3 and then record and try to mix my vocals. So I never used to get a proper song and thing like this. So it's never until when I finish school and I take like a time out and start to do like some online courses and stuff like that to understand music to an extent and oh I say like oh this is what you need to do and stuff like that and then I make it happen. I never stop doing music. Mm -hmm. It's very important what you just said there you know because you were ba you're basically telling me that you didn't have the theory part of it you know to no, really blend it. That is it. I and never had the theory part of music right. and I never I never had nobody in my car to teach me like explain right. to me like, this is what you're supposed to do and stuff like that. Right. But you realize it was your passion so you decide to you know go and check it out on your own to, to try to get it done properly, you know, or at least in line with, with what and, um, one of the um, one of the stuff which make me start a pre music and believe in music more deeper, look at it more deeper is when I went on attachment for college. I went on attachment and I get fired from attachment the third day for literally absolutely doing nothing at all. The boss just tell me, go home and do come back. And I was like, why? Like, why? And he wanted this is his company, go home and do come back. So me at this point in time, I seen I can't really like work with people and anything. Like, I can't understand why is the reason why I get fired from attachment. So I went home that day. I went home that day and going home that day, I just seen if I could do music and have my own studio, I will not have to work with nobody. And stuff like that. So this was my mindset from a long time, a very long time. Mm -hmm. So you, you wrote your first song. Um, I mean, tell us again, what was that first song and what was the idea? That, was, that song was Bloody Hell. That song come along in 2018. That, that song was in Sokamuna, me and my best friend, which is Porsche. There's a Porsche who have me to this still doing music because 2017, after I finished college, I've been home, and to be honest, the music was not even working out for me. And it 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 sent me in a mental depression stage. Like, how I started to think of saying, boy, this music thing, you know, I went on YouTube, I did it all, my old music. I threw away my mic, I threw away my speakers, everything. Like, I said, I'm done with music. That's it for me, no more music. And then, even though I never know, but I normally used to play football, I play for the national team, come up to the national system and stuff like that. So I say, I'm going to focus more on the football because I finished school and have a job at the home, I train the music and the thing working. So I go in park and then my, this friend of mine tell me he want to speak to me. So I say, you want to speak to me? Why you want to speak to me? So he's saying, like, he want to talk to me about music. At this point, I literally don't want to have a music conversation with no one because I don't give up on music. And he telling me, he see the potential in me. I have good writing skills, good creativity skills. And he go like walk along with me and help me. And he have a couple of people he know who can help me as well. So I said, okay, I end up and went to the studio that year. I do two songs. I do two songs, but I never really put no emphasis in them. I just do them for just do it for the sake of him. And then in 2018, we was in um in Sukamuna and I like skinny. I like skinny. He like fire. And I know in St. Vincent's all the time, a rival between skinny and fire. Right, true, right? true. And I when when um fire come on, he the jump up his fire. When skinny come on, I the behave in real wild. You know how we just do it in St. Vincent? Mm -hmm. real wild, gala gala And he he put it over my shoulder and tell me, you know, you know. Is you supposed to be on the stage and I didn't crowd behaving so for you? That is what he tell me. And when he tell me to come, like it just hurt me because a lot of people in my community mm -hmm. just normally tell me, you have the talent, you have the skills, this and stuff like that. So when he tell me they come like it, I stop like a brain freeze one moment and I think boy, it and I see it. You know, it's shooting, you know, it's shooting magical, you need to be on the stage, you need to be on the stage. And then um same time, some English people was right side me, and one the English person said, "Wow, these people bloody hell crazy!" I know how serious <laughs> people are being, and I just, mm. I just took it from there, and from that moment, I said bloody hell crazy from there, 
straight to home because you know so come on our can say you don't walk with the phone mm-hmm. you know once you're on and in front of the stage you don't walk with the phone so mm-hmm. my phone was home and i telling him bloody hell crazy bloody hell crazy and the man saying like you're going off or something and i say no but <laughs> you know i forgot this thing i don't want to this and i go home i record it on my phone one time just bloody hell crazy that was all i have and then i start to research the um the english heritage we start the history, how they speak, how they break the English, stuff like this. And then I come along and uh, I, link, he t- I start the song, I send the chorus to him first and say, we think about this. And he tell me, yes, I like this. So I tell him, I'm going to start to make the rhythm, right? I'm going to start to make the rhythm. So he telling me, no, I don't want you make this rhythm here. Let me get somebody else to make the rhythm. I don't want you to make the rhythm, Right? So that's how I end up a link up with that old school mate of mine now, who named Cassie Oliver, or a, AKA, or a known as Super K, right? And I tell him, like, I have a song where I think I've potential to reach far, and I go like pull link up and made a rhythm. But he is, he is currently in America, I'm in St. Vincent, at the moment, where we were speaking. So, you know, the smartphone make communication a very lot easier. So, mm. Me and Super K link up and we was going back and, back and forth night after night, days after days, months. We started this stuff in July, like July the 5th or the 6th. And we never get right until Christmas Day in 2018. He messaged me and tell me, check your email. I send you a Christmas gift. Then when he sent me, there's exactly like where they want because mm-hmm. me some, me a person who actually know what I want before. Right. I know I want it song like I have like something in my need. So doing this now, I get the rhythm, but I see if I sing on the rhythm alone, it probably ain't my get it big hype. Like if I have some established artists on it, right? Because right. the strategy, I have to be smart. True, so true. I end up and reach out to Casper G. Come on, Casper G was good. So I reach out to Casper G. I say, yo, I have a rhythm here. I would like you on the rhythm. I send him the rhythm. He tell me, yeah, I like the rhythm. I send the rhythm to a few other artists, a couple of artists, reject the rhythm and stuff like that. Casper G send me back a song and party dog. Casper G get party dog and we go in the studio. And then we go in the studio now when I record it. Casper G telling me like, you could change this part of the song. The guy got part of them saying, um, carrying him to country, see how the man and them go along. So he telling me like, you could change the man and put girl. And like, he give me some pointers. Right? He actually gave me some pointers in the studio at the moment, which helped the song to even be a bigger song. Right? Mm-hmm. And we just, I just record, it was my project, and I put the song for the project. When the project, Jack, to be honest, my song was never even getting played. Some radio station had the next two songs on the radio and never had my song. And then I remember he had a DJ named DJ Sara. DJ Sarah messaged me and tell me, yo, the song here, but I'm going to start to play this song here. And then he played the song, and then the song just started grow from there. I went in um Saltly Water, um, Sokamuna, which is where I live in. This is the first time they ever have it. Tech part, win. I said, okay, then, this looking nice. Then, Natalie, what did have in Sokamuna? One my friend, the owners who have in the competition and one my friend, his friend, and reach out to my friend and say, if he could get me for coming in the competition. I went to the competition, take part, I win. I had a next hook coming out the next day in Georgetown. I went to Georgetown, I win. And then after that, I started to get a lot of shows. The song started to grow all over, but the song playing, people tagging me on the media every second. And so I made the song just go big. Mm-hmm. Well, the song know- go big. The song go bigger than I expect. I even fly. I went Barbados for sure, Trinidad. I go Canada for sure. Mm-hmm. I was to go America. But due to the America, the Canada should have fallen the same day that I ended up, I went to Canada. And that was it. And that was your first breakout year, really? Yeah, that was my first breakout year. But my breakout year was a very successful one. It's not mm-hmm. like an ordinary artist breakout year. It was a massive year for me. And I forgive mm. God, thanks to the people who support me throughout, throughout that time and who still support me, I forgive them, thanks. Ready to let you face, ready to drop a bomb. 
So I get into every pet, they keep ready in the land. Boy, carry them to what is your vital and never follow. Why? You remember only what this is pure of our honor. Mars, when you reach it, it's over. Everybody, I push, push. Are you with the big guns? This was my cause. This was this people, bloody hell crazy. The bloody hell man. Oh, Lord, the bloody hell crazy. The bloody hell man. It's these people, bloody hell crazy. The bloody hell man. And it's these people, bloody hell crazy. The bloody hell man. <laughs> um so okay so you write so you write and sing do you produce as well no well i used to i used to produce but i stopped i stopped i delete the produce out my skill craft i'm no longer a producer mm -hmm. so um okay so you 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 got the breakout that year and yes you Tell us who are some or, or for our viewers and listeners, tell us who are some of the participants in, in the Soka Mona that year for the purpose of those who weren't following Vinci Carnival around that time. Well, um that year it had Fire Empress, Kido, Tuffer, Lola, Kami, Kami, me myself, it had dimes and pixel, scabs. Casper G, Fireman. That was everybody who took part in the Soka Mona 2019. Oh, and the magician just went and blew away everybody and, take, and took seven to sleep. <laughs> no, well, well, it's a plan, it's a competition. You had to prepare going into a competition. The best thing about Soka Mona, you know, it's not an easy battle field. And that is the first thing you have to know as an artist, you have to analyze you have to make a strategy, you have to plan, you have to prepare proper to prevent poor performance. So you have to make sure, prepare. I don't know what the best artist, but I know I go in on a competition. Anytime I enter a competition, I enter a competition to win. To win. If I think I go in a competition and I can't win, I will wait until I believe like, this is my moment. I know I could win and I will take part in it. Okay, before before Sip jumps in, let me ask you this because um and, and one of our interviews, the, there's an artist who said that Soka Mona can make you and, and break you because it's a, it's a tough battlefield in terms of if you succeed, it's all good. And also if you succeed, you can have people looking, you know, like artists above you might look down and, you know, stop hailing you, stop, you know, you know, powering with you. And if you don't succeed and you're up there, it could make you down very low and it, it could put you on the low. So what's your perspective from that? I mean, yeah, I well, they, they are not lying. Soka Monarch can make you and Soka Monarch can break you. But really and truly in your life, in life, Soka Monarch can make you and Soka Monarch can break you. Soka Monarch can make you. Yes, it can make you, but it's you if you want it to break you. Right? Because if you continue bringing good music, you're delivering, you're doing the right stuff, you're preparing proper, so come on, it's an annual event. It comes once per year. So how an event which comes once per year can break you. As we as people, we think different. Our mind is a very powerful thing. You have to be level-minded and understand life to an extent because being a Soka Monarch champ, plenty of people going look into you. People going to stop paying you, yes, but not everybody going to stop paying you. If you continue building and where you start, you go up. It's like you're building a house and you start the foundation and you start the foundation of people saying, when you start the foundation, people saying stuff and you decide, people talking to you, I'm going to just stop. And then you just fail the whole project. Tell the authority, open up the gate and then go see anytime we touch wood, eh, eh, it's problem. Anytime we link up, eh, eh, it's problem. Anytime we drink rum, watch, watch, watch problem. Some answer mystery, we live in for them, solve them. Good afternoon again and welcome to Vinci Internet Radio. I want to start by asking about that song, Bloody Hell Crazy. Uh, I know that took you a long way, but when, when you trying to put that song together, what was the main idea when you heard that phrase from that English person? No, well, um, when I hear the phrase, you know, it have a little coincidence in it. Here, it have a coincidence. I hear the phrase, bloody hell. 
bloody hell crazy, right? Bloody hell crazy. I hear the phrase. Then um, when I reach home, I had a friend named Lenny. Lenny did post on um Instagram and um WhatsApp and her snap and say, she like hey when English people talk, especially when they say in it, right? She posts that and she snap. So I saying this just come like a coincidence because. One post, I know he the whole bloody hell, and then look, my friend post and say something more English. So I it just even inspire me and motivate me more. But when I hear crazy, bloody hell, crazy heart, you know, you have come with something crazy, something insane. Yes, and that 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 took you a long way. Uh, were you expecting that uh, response or that breakout from that that song? Well, to be honest. I was expecting the breakout, but I was never expecting it to be that huge, that big. I did expect it was a song which would have given me the breakout, but I never expect it was a song which would have made me travel, made me win a soca monarch. Remember, I lose the road march title by one point, and I did not win Carnival Tuesday because I was not feeling well. So I did have to cancel all the chuck appearance and stuff like this. And I still lose my one point. So the 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 the, the amount of success in song bring really and truly I was not expecting, to be honest. Yeah, because when I uh, when I was preparing for this uh, jingle, that song really is the song that really took me by surprise. Then I, ha- I had to listen to the whole song just to get an idea of what you were saying. Then when I when I when I did that, I realized that hey, this is somebody that he took this um this line from. So doing that and being so creative sometimes it is, is well done, you know, because I, I can say putting that song together was, was for me was a well well put together song. Yeah, Outside- so, um, I think one of the um, things which helped me in that is I had an English B teacher named Miss Graves in St. Martin and she all the time used to pick on me. Every time we get English B, she had to want me to read. She had to want me to be a character. And I used to say, but miss, look how much people did in the class. And then she used to just pick on me. Like, I feel like she used to pick on me. So going about now, I used to like get the book. Them. I used to stay home reading the book, them, being the character, going in school, going get English, be just some be this character and stuff like that. And then give me a love for English B. So you see all the storytelling, that is my thing. That is my thing. I love the storytelling. If you listen to most of my music, is more storytelling music. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna take it back a little bit to your sporting days. Uh, you say you play, you represent throughout the um, St. Vincent during the years. Which one of the teams that you re- where you really started? You started on the Camden Park area teams. Yeah, well, um, I started to play in Camden Park. I was playing for. Um, Come down at Chelsea, then I played for um, Parkside. Then I used to play for um, Redemption Sharps. Then I go back to Parkside. And then when I was 14, I started to play on Parkside Premier Team. When I was 14, when I was 13, 14, I started to play on Parkside Premier Team. And then I played for the um, National Under 15. I was the captain for that team. Then I played for the Under 17. I was the captain for that team. I played the Under 20. I was the captain for that team. I played for the under 23. I was not the captain for that team. And then I played for the senior team in 2019, 2018, 2019. Okay. The reason why I tell you that, uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of my history. I played for Rosiers and Sarnil in those days. I also used to be refereeing. I also come down Camden Park and used to be a referee. So that's why I want to take you back to your, um, to your soccer days. So I, okay. I was a goalkeeper for Rosians in those days. With well, um, I, hear, I, hear, I, hear, I hear about Rosian. Well, I heard about them, but Rosian was before my time, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I then I moved to Cyan Hill. Then I started refereeing back there. I used to be refereeing in Victoria Park almost every evening. I refereed a couple of games on Camden Park as well before I moved to Canada. So that's why I really want to take you back down, down, down that memory lane. Yeah, down memory lane. No problem, no problem. Yeah, outside, outside your sporting activities, what other things that you have, um, that, that you take part in? No, well, um, I love sports. This is sports. I, very, I really love sports. I love sports with my heart. And now I'm going to use the tracks as well. Because I'm fast and I could have run. I probably could have run down bolt back in the days. But I used to do tracks 
And then I like volleyball. I normally just play volleyball. And then Mr. Post was just like music, or then it's just music, right? You just eat, sleep, music, G music. Outside, outside, um, you you sporting and you and you you calypso. What other things that you um you would like to encourage on young people to get into? I would like um young people to get into the skill field, right? Like get a skill because other from music differently from music. I am a electrician, right? That is why I study in college and stuff like that. I'm a certified electrician, right? So um it will not hear what home I live in. I just the here. I'm not. I'm currently not home, home, home. I'm home, but I'm not home, home, home. If you understand what I mean, home, home, home. I have my official studio and stuff like that, and I do the whole wiring. I wiring. I wire over the house and stuff like that, and it's a lot of money. So get a skill of plumbing, be a plumber, an electrician, a welder, something like that can help you a lot. I, I try to instill that into people you now, just to give you a little idea. Me and my yeah. host are uh, basically in, also into the tech field. We um we did courses. I, I did electrical also. I did electrical engineering, electronics engineering. My co-host also do um electronics. So we know we know we know where you're coming from. And I also try to encourage people to do it because you never know where you're gonna drop or which country you're gonna drop into. And out here, uh skill is very important. So yeah, I, very, very. Uh, all around the world, our skill is very important. Got everyday buildings, building, building and demolish. A switch, a fuse, something out them going bad. A pipe going bust, and that's just the true reality of life. So work is all the time there. As we say in, in on this interview, we don't really stop at what you're doing. Now. We talk about everything. So we just try to get you to expose the wrong dead person and and those kind of stuff. That's that's the main thing why we give this interview. We don't. We don't really, if you want to talk about anything you want to talk about, we're here. You just talk about yes. it. We have, we have all the time in the world. So. All right, no, no problem, no problem, no problem. We, we bring it here so that you can sell yourself. Because one of the things I noticed, we don't have a platform that much for Calypso and Alta St. Vincent and the Grenadine. And what we are trying to do here is to make a platform for Vincent and Artis. You know, we want to promote well, Vincent see, and the I think, I think it starts from home. Me even thinking about abroad, I think it's hard from home, like even home, like we need a foundation for the music, to push the music, to sell the music, like people for teach you about the music, like it don't have nobody for teach you. Well, Rodney just opened an academy, so I congratulate him. He just opened up like a music school academy, but I growing up, I never had a pause, so I remember to tell me like, okay, you need to record this, you need to record so, you need to do this, you need to get your stems and stuff like this. Like, the basic about music, like, I had to learn it off my own. Like, it's not something I could do in college or uh, even in school, they never used to offer it. And the people that offer it, the most they would teach us a little about notes, about notes and then stuff. The, 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 thing, the thing I notice a lot about um, our people from Autos and the Gunning. We also need a good managerial team, and, and artists also need to manage themselves. Because what I what I do notice is that I I try to do a lot of Caribbean stuff, and the thing I get a lot of cooperation from is the Jamaicans. I don't know why. They send me a lot of material. They want interviews. They want everything. But my my focus is basically on Saint Vincent first. Jamaica and Trinidad have the the knowledge and the person who will teach you about the music and tell you about the music. So they understand the music to an extent. Like you understand an interview is very important because you never know who can be on an interview listening to you, who can be watching, even if it's one person or one person who knows somebody, who knows somebody, and is a way of selling yourself. Every promotion is good promotion. So understanding that, how important one interview can be to your life is where you will. Because at first, I never really liked to do interview at first, but now I realize how important an interview be. So if I had the opportunity and the chance to do an interview every day, I will do an interview. No matter if you're small, you're big, you're medium, you're large, I will do an interview with you. I, I think I would like you to really emphasize that again, because that's the problem we are having. And I think you, you really hit it there for me. I was going to say it somewhere along in, into, into this interview because sometimes I really get upset about not being sentient, not pushing themselves. But since you say it, 
I wouldn't say anything about it again, because that's exactly the same thing I'm trying to push along, that it doesn't matter how many people listen to your interview, that one person can kickstart your career, and you never realize how good an interview is. And know that you say that it's, it's basically what I, I think um, you should really try to hit more of our artists home with, make sure you get yeah. interviews. Yeah, well, well, you see, I think it come with maturity and understanding. When it be a little bit more mature, when it be a little bit more understanding, like how things does work and stuff like that, you will understand like, okay, this is this is X, Y, Z, this is X, Y, Z. Because the next thing, a lot of artists, I did have it. We have this home hype, like we want to be the person to run home. We want to run home, like we want to be the man and the girl. So if somebody from probably like a local radio station call me, we will go and do an interview because we need the people on the ground to know, yeah, yeah, but we was never looking regional, we was never looking international, right? And that is where they separate the sheep from the goats. When it's starting to look higher, you want to reach higher, you start to understand, like, okay, I need to do this and stuff like that, then you will understand because one interview can change your whole life. And I just watch other people interview and hear they speak and stuff like that. You probably might have a DJ on this live now. Go and hear one more song and say, yo, this song is real fire. You never know. So you never know what can happen. So anyone reach out to you to do an interview, do an interview and you might say something for an interview and later down in the years they come back and do something good for you. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing before I pass it back over to, to the host. I, this really, I do a lot of... Um, Caribbean music, Vincent, especially Vincentia music. I try to push Vincentia Raga Soap, whatever you want to call it, a lot. But I have a lot of English or European listeners. And I notice between, say, midnight, which is about 5 o'clock their time in the morning, to about 5, which is about 10 o'clock their time, my meter goes up because of internet, I can really track with my listeners. And I notice between that time when I play a lot of Caribbean music, the listenership goes up. Because we even had an interview with a, someone from England who sent us a request for an interview. So, you know, sometimes you don't really realize how many people are listening. Because if, if, somebody, if somebody send me and say, well, okay, uh, this is a song and I want you to interview this artist, then, you know, people are listening. What you don't expect listening? So I realize, yeah, yeah. I realize in Europe, the listenership is very big. And especially and the Caribbean music. One thing, one thing I'm going to tell you. It no matter who the person being like, listen to everybody. Because I remember, right, is a little, a little girl, a little girl, like a little primary school girl. I went by primary school to perform, and I was singing. And when I finished singing, she turned to me and said, when you reach the nice part of the song, which is the chorus, you must wait. You must stop singing and we we sing it because we like singing it and you just sing it and we do hear ourselves singing it. That's why a, li a little child tell me that. It's not a big post who told me that a little child explained that to me. And I say, when I go, my meds in it and I say, yeah, you know, it's real thing. So I just, when I reach the chorus, I just stop and when the crowd sing. But it's a little toddler who told me about that. Yeah, and sometimes we don't even know where the advice is coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Joker Why prove it, man, man, Vinci. Ah. You want me come inside the thing? Get a man, anything. Play a mass, anything. Then go lay anything. I'm moving fast, anything. She says, slow down, anything. Take your time, anything. Cause my G, you be so again. So if you think nice, girl, I'm about to come one time. If you think nice, girl, then I go come two time. If you think nice, girl, then I go come three time. Four time. Four time. Uh -huh. And we party, I keep. Then my jiggle reach Could I in the tongue Or even under the beach Before I start to form Let me make a speech And party in fact with jelly like clam It's a for what I beat you Want me come inside the thing Get a mad anything Play a mass anything Then go lay anything I'm moving fast anything She says slow down anything Take your time anything Alright, um, you guys you guys said it good there Um, Big up to Rod this small He's doing a, a really good thing And um. I try to have him on the program as well, but so far not successful. But anyways, I'll, I'll try again. But I just want to say, mention, you know, that it's not that we don't have people because when 
when we planned this program, we had planned for just Saturdays. And now, like last week, we had to do two shows on Sundays and one on Saturdays. So it's not that we don't have people. It's just that the people we want to to come on to, because we can go outside of, of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which eventually we will, but we just want to have this platform to highlight, you know, Vincentian first. You know, so it's not that we don't have people to come on. It's just sometimes the feedback is not what you're expecting or you or you're surprised. And and magically you, you said it you said it right. You know, it could be one person. This program could design your interview right now could be designed just just so that one person, you know, gets the effect. And that one person could make a difference in your career. You know, so yes, you just absolutely. Really know. yeah, it could be even a promoter that's listening and go like Oh, that's the guy. Because I'll tell you something. Um, when I had a, a, a certain artist on the other day, and you know, he, he had a, a very popular song, and I go like, okay, I'm having this person on. And then they go like, I don't know him. I go, yeah, I bet you know him. And then I sent the song, one of his songs to them, and then they go like, oh, I know this song, but I didn't know the artist, you know? So it's very important. Yeah, and we, have, we, get that, we get that a lot. Because um, yeah. I, I was in America recently. I went up for the Labor Day weekend and I was by a show and my song playing, I did the crowd and like some Chinese was right there and they was like, you know, I love this song. I can't wait to give me this artist. And I was like right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you see what I mean? So, so yeah. yeah. And, and I'm telling you, I didn't like prior to that, I, I didn't know. I, know. I knew your song. I didn't really know you very well. Like if I had seen you, I wouldn't know it's you or whatever, right? And right, I, think right. I was on. Um, I had added you on, on Instagram, and I saw you had a live, on Instagram, and that's when I go like, oh, because you know I have friends who went home that carnival year, and they came back and said this song is he going crazy, and then I said like, oh, that's the magical who sang this song, you know, and and then I was able to put a, a face to the name, so you know, these little yeah. things, you know, thanks to social media as well that you know, you know, you guys can be out there, you know in a more open platform. But anyways, um, coming back to the music now. So you won the road match. Um, and no, you, the Soka Monarch. I never the Soka Monarch, road. sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then you, um, so you, you had three rural Soka Monarch titles. Yeah. So yeah, was yeah. that after or before? No, that, that was that before. Thing? That was before. That was before. That was leading up to the big Soka Monarch. I never really know when I even reached the big Soka Monarch, to be honest. I've been honest with you. Reaching the big soccer monarch was never my goal. The person who made, I believe, who Bill complimented me is Marshall Mantano. Because Marshall, they came here for a skinny show, which is Black Wave. And if you go on YouTube and watch the performance, before Marshall changed over to everyone he saw, he singing bloody hell crazy. And I was like, wow, Marshall Mantano singing my song. Whoa. <laughs> that, is, that is huge, man. That, that's a big, a huge yes, And then when we done, he like, he come to me because I go end up and go backstage because he didn't want to meet me. And then I go backstage and then he was like, yo, this song here is a masterpiece. You is my pick for Soka Mona. Make me proud. No, that was the words of Marshall Mantano towards me. Whoa, whoa. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. Yeah. It's amazing how these legends can just pick out something that's a hit. And yeah. the um the next person who I happy some homage to as well is um is Fireman. Mm-hmm. Because I remember my fireman had like apparently about 30 minutes, a 30 minutes conversation at Jaja So come on. After I finish, he te- he come to me and he said, Come let me speak to you. I see you. I see greatness in you. I see talent in you. And then he telling me, if me was a judge tonight, you was not going to win. So I say, no, why? And he said, You perform well, but you in singing your song, you met the crowd. Get the best of you, you're interacting too much with the crowd. You need to sing your whole song. Like he gave me a lot of pointers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which I just had to say, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. For the gifts, those pointers are gift to me. Gift which, you know, when I get a special priceless. gift, you have to start Priceless, it. man. Priceless. Priceless. Yeah. 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 So so who who was some of the artists you look up to, you looked up to when, when you were growing up? Like in when you when you actually start to think that you want to sing so well soca doing soca my main artist my role model was skinny fabulous still still skinny fabulous i love 
skinny music to a different level. If skinny drop a song nine o'clock, two past nine, I don't know on you old song from head to right up. That is how much I look up to skinny and how we go about doing things. So skinny was one of my main artists, you know, problem child. I look up to problem child. I look up to Luther. I look up to Fireman. I like well, you know, Marshall Mantano, Bungie Garling. I look up to Bungie Garling. I look up to voice. Cause when voice come on the scene, voice just come with a whole different dimension, a different approach. I look up to Boise. I look up to Waswiz. These are just some of the artists who I look up to and yeah, like say, them is the real deal. Mm -hmm. Those are very powerful artists. Like, I mean, St. Vincent really has some very powerful artists. I mean, forget the forget the legend like Beckett and so so and, and those guys. Yeah, St. Yeah, Vincent, 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 like you have errors, right? Like you had the Beckett errors, you had the skinny errors. But you see the middle era in St. Mm -hmm. Vincent. I think St. Vincent, I disappointed in St. Vincent middle era. You see the middle era of artists that was some of the best artists which came out in the middle era. That is the era I talking about with um Royal, Matt Skull, Mesu, Wetty Beats, Keep Currency, Milo, Siku. That second era, that third era was a different era. Like mm -hmm. the man, the talent was beyond, was beyond. Okay, so why why do you think that they never really excel to the level of, you know, the, the skinny and the and the fireman? That is a question I think we are at them. I I literally no, I don't know if it's mismanagement or mismarketing. There is something I literally don't know. But that era, the only man out that era who basically like still does the music full time is Wetty Beats. But think about the whole era. Think about the, the list of names you are just called. Think back about it. The whole era was greatness. Like literally greatness. Mm -hmm.